they were some of the best days of my life. Yeah, like I absolutely. look at like early lands. I look at just like sleeping like six people in a hotel room to <laughs> exactly, save money. Yeah. Like I, I literally used to drive out to um, Michigan State University pretty much every single weekend, just go land Halo. And like this place like was not well kept. And I just remember being like, all right, I got to move these like pizza boxes next to yep. me and like move these wrappers and like go to sleep here like a, like a vampire. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Around the Bar. It is a podcast and interview series where I invite somebody on to have a drink and a chat. Today is a special episode. We have my man, Dave Walsh, or otherwise known as Walshy. He's a legendary professional esports veteran, having played on one of the most successful console esports teams in history, Final Boss. He's a Lifetime Achievement Award winner, the first gamer ever signed to Red Bull. He's an entrepreneur and a professional commentator for Halo Esports. Basically, he's a legend. Today, we are yet again drinking some old fashions consisting of sugar, bitters, cherries, orange zest, and of course, bourbon. We've also just launched a Patreon to help fund the show. The Patreon will include access to three additional shows that serve as an extension to the Around the Bar podcast. Any support is incredible because it does help the show continue to move forward. So it would be awesome if you guys could at least check it out. Thank you guys for supporting and for watching. And I hope you guys enjoy this conversation with Walshy. All right. Welcome back to another episode of Around the Bar. We've got a legend in the building today. We have got my man, Walshy. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for having me. On yeah, there. absolutely. man. What are, what are we drinking today? As you take a sip. We are drinking an old fashioned. However, I heard you use this last episode. Yes. So, um, old back fashioned to back. With, a, with a cherry. With a cherry. Like, I feel like every time I order old fashioned nowadays, like they bring it without one. And I feel maybe sometimes too like shy to ask where i'm like can i get a cherry with that? <laughs> yeah you were very particular about All the right. cherry so we got a, <laughs> we have two jars of cherries for you we'll send you home with one <laughs> if, if that's what you want to do um yeah but last last episode we we drank it with rye and uh this time it's actual whiskey so it is a little bit different it's not the exact same drink but but this is the earliest around the bar we've ever done. Yeah, I mean, 6.30 a.m. I mean, this is this is rough, but, you know, here we go. We just got back from breakfast. <laughs> no, it is it is like a little past noon right now. And you've got uh, you're in town for uh, the Halo Major commentary. And um, you've got dress rehearsals in a couple hours. So we'll see how this goes. It depends on if we're reminiscing about the old great times or talking about the good new times and uh, having a bunch of drinks. Yeah, you'll have like a behind the scenes peek if like I somehow get announced that I'm not on the broadcast this weekend for some reason. Just like, all right, Dave, Dave showed up sloppy to, to rehearsals and didn't take it as serious as he should. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see what, uh, what happens then. How's your, how's your beer pong game? We have a, a, little, a little mini game after the show. Ooh, um... I feel like I, I'm I'm okay. You're okay. Yes, I like. I don't know. Last time I played beer pong, maybe maybe like my bachelor party or something like okay, that. Okay, okay, so okay. A little bit. What was the? Uh, did you did you go to college? Um, I did way later. So oh, after I did okay. the the gaming career, you kind of um, missed the frat. I did. But yeah. Like, I, I, I'm kind of cool, so I got invited <laughs> to parties. But I'm like, you know what? Like, I'm sorry. Like. Thank you for the invite, but I'm not going to yeah. show up this party as a 30 year old. So. Yeah, I I understand that. I'm I'm in that. Uh, we were just talking about the the new blow up of the whole new age of content creators, and if they're all going. I I saw a TikTok yesterday. These these new uh, this new podcast just had like a birthday party for one of the new like up and coming like banging podcasts, and I was like, dude, I if I was there, I would feel ancient, like. <laughs> Because it was all these like eighteen to twenty two year olds partying and and celebrating the L A life, and I was like, I already feel old. I turned forty this year. Oh wow! I turned the big four zero. You are an OG. <laughs> you when it comes to all, I mean, all of this. You uh, do you ever feel like any sort of pressure or any sort of? I guess maybe like not, pr- not pressure is not the right word, but are you ever like proud of of what you guys did coming up? Like 100%. creating all of this. Yeah, I think there's, um, you know, 
growing up at an age where gaming and esports didn't have the prevalence it does now, mm -hmm. um, it's it's all we want to do. So like any of the OGs that you talk to, they're like, man, I wish there was like a well structured tournament <laughs> set up. I wish that I knew a, a, a correct path to right. make a living at this. And like back then, it was just like I would do anything to play video games and just even get my my cost covered. Yeah, and exactly. So to see it now, like where it's at, it's um, it's it's incredible. It's, it grew faster than I expected in, in many respects. Like things yeah. took like a really exponential curve when they when they really grew with a lot of different esports. And yes, now we're seeing kind of a, a correction again. I, I, the correction was always going to come. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, overall, it's uh, it's just incredible to see. Yeah, I think uh, talking to Big Timer, um, who is a Call of Duty professional. Uh, for, and he, he retired in 2014. He's like a, a fan favorite. And even talking to him now, because he's still in Optic and we, we talk and everything. And he was like, dude, like when I was competing, like we would be, we would be playing online tournaments against 400 teams for like 85 bucks a, per, <laughs> a person, like for the winner. And they love, I mean, you just loved it. You yeah. loved it. It was just pure passion and yeah, kind of a pure desire for it. And I think also... Anytime you talk to somebody early in on something like that, like whether it's a emerging craft like gaming or skateboarding, or whatever, like the people that are in know they're like, this is amazing. This yeah. is going to be something bigger someday. And the rest of the mainstream audience will catch on at some point. But right now, like you're kind of at the forefront of it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, for the very few people that don't know, <laughs> give a quick summary of, of who you are. Um, so my name's Dave Walsh or Walshy. I uh, was a professional Halo player back in the day. So like I think I started competing in the first tournaments around like 2002. <laughs> um, like before this is I think even before That's MLG so existed. Yeah, yeah. So like this is around the time when uh, the tournament circuit MLG came around like a couple years later in its infancy. Um, I won a lot of Halo tournaments back in the day, and um, let's see. From there, I've I've done a few other things in the game industry. Even since then, even but. with all you're saying, you're saying a lot of uh, like accomplishments and uh, attributes. Like you're still being humble about it. That's the <laughs> thing. That's the thing is that uh, you, you know I I was a, a big fan of Call of Duty growing up, but every all that all that Call of Duty ever got compared to was Halo because of how popular you guys were, and especially. Especially yourself, like you're, you were the first person in esports to ever get signed by a major company in Red Bull, and uh, I kind of want let's talk about that first. Uh, what, what was that? What was that process like? Like I, I've heard that you were you did you didn't have an agent at the time and you did it all yourself. Yes, um, that's insane. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, back then I was looking towards uh, you know aspirational brands and who I wanted to like work with, and um, uh, I ended up meeting a rep at one point at like an old Halo tournament, maybe like 2004 or something like that. And yeah. then like basically from then on, I would just like email them like a monthly or bi-monthly update. Like, hey, had another tournament. We won again. And there's the same teams <laughs> and this, this, this. And, you know, like, you know, not knowing how to really make a business case the, at the time because we didn't really have like all these metrics and streaming numbers to be like, yeah, here's how many people are being, you know, reached. Here's uh, the impact that competitive gaming has but yeah, i'd be yeah. like you know at some points i'd try to be like hey like look at this like we started wearing these sennheiser headphones and then the next tournament 25 percent of the teams are wearing these sennheiser yeah, headphones yeah. it seems like we might have some sort of influence here <laughs> don't know how to connect these dots but check back soon <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's that's so so you put together like a deck and everything or you just talk uh just more so talk okay, yeah, yeah, yeah just yeah. like kind of keep up to date and they would like seed me the product and then um when it uh got a little bit larger like uh, in 2006, MLG had like a TV show. It was on, on USA TV. So it was like six or seven one-hour episodes. One, right. one episode each uh, covered a tournament at that time. And so at that point, that's when I got the sponsorship. I think that was like very easy one-to-one -one for them to be like, oh, oh yeah. all right, this is on like Saturday mornings on USA <laughs> yeah. TV. Like, okay. Yeah. There's <laughs> there's a multiple people that are – I mean, I, I've, I've, I've actually never seen the series. I've heard – I mean, I have a podcast I do every day with – or every week with Maniac. So we talk Halo all the time. And he – you know, that's a lot of – a lot of people in his generation, that like kind of second wave, that's how they – that's how they got their love was – 
watching on Saturday mornings, watching that USA show. What was what was that show about? I need to. I wish I would have watched it, but I I, I want to go back and watch it. I feel it like somewhere. it's got to exist somewhere. It has to, I don't, right? I don't know where <laughs> you get it now, but um, it was essentially just covering like a couple matches kind okay. of like on a high level or like they would maybe cover like, here's a midship team slayer. And like, let's look at like final boss versus carbon. And this is, okay, a okay. you know, they choose like a few of the best games throughout the yeah. tournament. Like here's a 50, 49 game. And they yeah, would yeah. do a few um, character profile pieces throughout it. And be like, here's Walsh here. Here's ogre two, or here's yeah. shockwave and all these, all these old halo names that, you know, um, and I think what really resonated with people back then was, there was just like no real gaming on TV as far as competitive gaming. Sure, you'd see like a game review or you'd see something like a G4 TV was on, G4, you know, yeah, yeah. was out there, but there was nothing that was like covering esports before that word even existed. Yeah. And so I think that just really connected a lot of people because they're like, oh my God, not only is this cool to see what I'm passionate about, even if they weren't into Halo, even if they were just into any sort of game, they were like, there's there's something here. Like there's some like legitimate path. They're talking about these people who are pros, who are making money who are traveling the country and doing this for a living. Yeah. 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 And w w oh, that's, that's, that's so interesting. Was it, was it more of like a reality show or was it more of like a documentary? Um, cause I've I seen some, say, there's a, there's some like shows that come luckily out. Luckily it didn't skew too far in like the reality side. Okay, like good, in, yeah. in shorts, they would do, like I said, like some character profile pieces. Like, yeah. Let's go follow around like me and my, you know, neighborhood yeah, yeah. in like Grand Rapids, Michigan. And like, you know, <laughs> They'd show like some some like kind of personal pieces like that, but it wasn't. Um, is there anything on reality YouTube? TV? Is there anything on YouTube, Matt? You think you're trying to find it? <laughs> See, I, I think I've tried to find it many times, but I, I've heard a story of T, I think, T yeah, Square. Yeah, that looks like an episode. Uh, I don't know if this is like an MLG. That's, broadcast that's definitely an episode. This no, is, this is an episode. This is an episode. So this is what like they would like cover um, like a game throughout it. Like for example, they're showing here like a match between Straight Ripping and Carbon. And they would like cover like here an Ivory Team Slayer like oh so this is so it was an MLG broadcast on USA because it um, says MLG up there MLG Pro yes. Circuit um, oh wow I think the the best way to describe it is they would take a few major moments throughout that MLG tournament like okay. those specific games kind of build a quick story around this tournament and then say here's the winner of the tournament so like all uh, right like, let's look at this final game oh. Oh, look at that jawline. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So this is 2006. That would have been 18 years ago. Oh, my God. <laughs> Walsh is on top of the world right now. The 22-year-old David Walsh from Grand Rapids, Michigan made $7,000. Dude, look at the Xboxes. <laughs> made $7,000. 70, 70. Oh, oh, okay, okay. I thought he said seven. But that would have been, yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> 70,000 still nothing to... This is where I spent about forty-five. Dude, how many times? How many shot? How many shoots have you done like this? Count. Um, it's got to be countless, right? There is probably countless sh random shoots I've done, but like I would say very few pieces that have been done where it's like you know go to my hometown or something okay, like okay, that. Okay. You know, like maybe like ESPN has done one or two, or like right. you know the show has came out a couple times or whatever. Yeah. So. Wow, that's 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 <laughs> so okay, dude. I'm so glad it's at seventy. But but you, I mean, you got you got a little pep in your step for a little bit there. Look look at all oh, the flip phone, bro. <laughs> Boost Mobile, Boost, Boost Mobile, Mobile. <laughs> Boost Mobile. Shout out Boost Mobile wherever they are. They're probably still kicking it though. Yeah, it just goes to show like how OG Halo was. I mean, literally, I think Halo and uh, I think maybe Super Smash Bros. Melee is just like the original console esports yeah just. we were like sharing the same venue with with smash yeah, yeah, yeah and that's i was always had such a deep uh appreciation of that game like i started like playing it a bit on the side oh really of course, that's and, awesome. like got to meet like some of the the, the old heads like yeah. you know like ken and isaiah yeah oh that's all, awesome that crew, so yeah i think there's a there's a there's a picture i was trying i was talking to pocket like three weeks ago trying to find this picture because uh, i was talking to a, a, a smash guy and uh, there's there's a picture of Puckett and then Final Boss and then PC Chris <laughs> and it's like in the back alley of a MLG venue and it's just <laughs> such an iconic picture but we couldn't end up finding it so I think uh, Sundance probably has it somewhere so uh, but that being said uh, you know similar to to Smash you got, you were part of a wave that pre you know 
uh, predates MLG. Like you met the people that started MLG probably a couple of years into competing. So what what was like super grassroots Halo like? Super grassroots Halo was still probably very similar to like the earliest of MLG days. Okay. Um, but I mean, it was, uh, I mean, even if I recall one of the f earliest MLGs I went to, like I literally brought my own Halo disc. Like this is like, it's very community-esque, oh, like in the sense that yeah. Smash is where it's like, all right, people are bringing out their CRTs, exactly. they're bringing out their GameCubes, they're yeah. bringing out their copies of, of Melee to just make this thing happen. Yeah. Um, and so it was, it was sort of like that. Um, I think as you, as you can expect, like it's not as much about the money. Like, sure, you oh, would yeah, maybe yeah. pool up all the prize, you know, all the entry fees, and it might be a couple thousand dollars for first place or something <laughs> like that. Maybe yeah. in some of the early ones, but for the most part, it's like, all right, I'm really passionate about this game, and I think I'm better than everyone else at it. So, like, yep. let's prove it. Let's yeah. throw it out on land. Let's talk shit on land <laughs> and then back it up on land. Yes. That type of thing. That's that's. Oh, so were there like. Like, um, well, consider also Halo One didn't really have a good online function. So, like early Halo One, there was no Xbox was Live. There was land. there was like an Xbox Connect fashion. For oh yeah, it, I, like, I heard you talking about that in a in an interview. I, what is Xbox Connect? It was basically a way to trick the Xboxes into thinking that they're on a LAN onto a network. So basically, it basically trick like an Xbox in New York and Seattle and be like, you both are you both are on LAN right now, even <laughs> though like you're room, yeah across thousands the of miles apart. And so the game was not built to play like that. So yeah. it'd just be like, you know, whoever was host could just basically shoot like normal. And then someone who was not host would be like seeing a second and a half or a half a second in the past. How? And like, it wasn't really playable. Right. It, was, it was at least like a okay substitute because if you loved Halo that much, you're like, all right, I can at least get on and hang shoot out with my friends. And yeah. Like, yeah. And like you can like shoot in like a hallway and like your shots are going to hit a few of them or whatever, yeah. but it's not like true Halo, at least Halo 1. Um, but it was better than nothing in some cases. And how, was that made by Xbox? Was no, that, it was made by some third party. Exactly, just that's insane. Did you look? Did, can you? Yeah, all this stuff is like so old we can't find it anymore. <laughs> Matt's trying to look up. I should Xbox start making Connect. up right, like Graham stuff. Like yeah, yeah, and then also like back then I, I invented this other thing. Oh, you can't find it. It's just yeah, it's it, up there. It's, it's, I, yeah, just trust me, I made it. <laughs> I invented Wi-Fi back in the day. Yeah, yeah, but, exactly. <laughs> me, and, me and Al Gore are working hard on that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that's in that's insane. I, I heard you say that. I think it was like in an interview with uh, you were interviewing uh, uh, Roy, talking about Xbox Connect, and I was like, dude, what? I, like <laughs> I, now, and then Xbox Live comes out. So, do you think Xbox Live was influenced by Xbox Connect? Most likely, I think it was. Um, I think Live already was in the works or happened, but okay. Halo One. I thought released with the original console or shortly at thereafter oh, yeah. and wasn't part of Xbox Live. Okay. It wasn't like an Xbox Live title. And I think later on, basically all titles that got created that were multiplayer were like yeah. had like the Xbox Live stamp of approval exactly. on them. They were like, you can play this game on Xbox Live. And yeah, so yeah, when yeah. Halo 2 came out for Xbox, that's uh, that one was on Live and things grew significantly. Oh, yeah. No, I think Halo 1 was like the staple like release game of Xbox original. Yeah. That and like, I think Fusion Frenzy. I was a big Fusion Frenzy guy, <laughs> huge Fusion Frenzy guy. But yeah, there was no, I, there, there couldn't have been Xbox Connect for Fusion Frenzy or well, otherwise. I mean, like, I think everyone also respected Fusion Frenzy to a degree because of, uh, they had the demo of Fusion Frenzy on original Halo. Yes. And so there would like, yeah. there would, I just remember like hearing tales back in the day. They're like, there's this guy who's, you know, he's from Seattle. His name's like Dr. Death or something. He can get like 224 on Twisted System. Twisted like, System, yeah. No way. <laughs> what? I gotta see this and like yeah, and it's just and dude, there's just YouTube videos and jump and duck. There's and YouTube like, videos of people still playing Persistent System. It's just <laughs> such a beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can like still remember it in my head. It was like the perfect mini game, uh, and then Mario Party. I mean, just it was basically they tried. It, it's funny what Xbox has like tried to do. Like they tried to replicate Mario replicate Mario Party and it just never quite worked but they have Master Chief and they but there were some always, elements of success exactly in spots and yeah. they'll always have Master Chief um, what, what do you think uh, uh, you, we were talking about like the, the early days of, of eSports and and everyone's just it's not even it wasn't even eSports it was people trying to beat the shit out of each other in video games that's all it was <laughs> and then like sometimes there was prize pools um, and and there, and so it just runs on like such a like soul. It runs on it runs on pure passion. Do you think that soul and passion is still around uh, in esports? 
Absolutely. I mean, I think the the soul and passion exists. I think it's to varying degrees in different titles and in different environments. And so when I think of like, let's say somebody running like their local collegiate esports club or meetups or lands, like like those grassroots are so deep. Yeah. Like as we get more and more money into it, or maybe like some games aren't as um, like, let's be real. There's some games that aren't maybe as authentic, like with the audience and maybe prize pool exceeds the, the amount of audience it has. Like right. I think some that's areas where we stray away from like the, the deep love of the game. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but without a doubt, I mean, people have and still love gaming. People yeah. are like putting their passions in. There's, there's people that are being, um, unfortunately, like overworked in different parts of the gaming industry yeah. and esports industry, that um, that are being run ran on per, pure passion. Like, yeah, that's and true. so I think there's, um, you know, I would love for it to to scale up and be. I think everything settled to where it needs to land, but yeah, right yeah. now, you know, there's sometimes there's like, there's this much audience for a game, but here's its prize pool, or there's or, this much prize pool for a game, <laughs> and here's its current audience, and yeah. like I think that's all going to be corrected over the long term but yeah. you know in the short run like as we're still in like some very early early ages for for esports it's going to be kind of all over the place yeah so as as you're competing in halo 1 early halo 2 and all of this everything seems like it's it's taking off were you ever a, a part of like or did you ever wonder like why is this taking off or were you just like head down and and playing um, cuz it seemed like you capitalized on the influx of audience way more than anyone else did. Yeah, I think I did some things right, and I also missed out in certain ways. Like, I think I did not uh, understand or capitalize on, like, the YouTube space. Like, I was creating, like, basically content that would be, like, a montage, but I didn't have my own YouTube channel. That's and true. And so, like, people would, like, upload I mean, my videos, and, like, I would just, like, I would just put, like, a whatever the equivalent was, like, a Dropbox back in the day. Like, here's my montage forum. Enjoy it. And, like, you know, yeah, yeah, hundreds yeah. of thousands or million-plus people would watch it, and it's, like, I didn't, you know, understand the, uh, yeah, how okay. to build that community on, like, something like YouTube. So, in some ways, <laughs> I definitely um, didn't capitalize correctly. But then, in other ways, like, I think, I think I did understand where gaming had a really strong trajectory. I think an early goal for my for me was like I would love to be kind of known as like maybe like a Tony Hawk of video gaming, like somebody that like yeah. popularizes it to the masses or become you know helps uh, expand the scope of of that sport or game. Um, and in in cases like that, like as it started to grow or take off, like it wasn't super surprising me. I think the the rate that it accelerated surprised me. Where yeah. I'm just like you know going in from a previous year in like 2005 maybe and like winning like a smaller tournament to like. All right, all right, we're on like USA TV on like Saturday morning. Like I remember like not really even kind of believing it until I saw the episode. Like right. I remember like waking up on a Saturday morning, like turn on the TV, and then it's like, all right, up next the MLG Pro Circuit show. I'm like, what the heck is this actually happening? <laughs> is like this me? I feel like I've I, you know I've I've been promised and not delivered in many cases in, right, in yeah. gaming in certain ways, and so like I kind of like don't you know think if things are too good to be true, I like don't believe it till I see it, and I was like. Oh my God, this is happening. Like, yeah, all right, yeah. I'm on TV. What the heck? <laughs> Let's go. I, I, I hear you talk about uh, skateboarding and extreme sports a lot when it comes in, in uh, when you're in interviews and stuff. So it, how, how much of an equivalent do you think that like that is like, is there an equivalent between extreme sports and gaming or is that something that you always wanted to tie together? Um, I think that there are, overlaps or learnings we can take from each side. I think anytime you try to just apply like a one-to-one -one methodology to like this craft to this new discipline, like it's not going to work because each, each community is so nuanced. Like yeah. even within gaming, like you can't apply the exact same learnings to like the Smash Melee community versus the Valorant community. It's like just completely it's so different, different yeah. audiences. That's However, true. even though they're both super competitive games and there's a yeah. lot of overlap. And so when I think of... When I think of something like emerging sports like skateboarding, and granted, I have not done all this research mm -hmm. or anything, but I looked at it as, all right, here is a new emerging sport, um, you know, comparing skateboarding to, to gaming. So there are different brands that are going to take off in that space. Like there are opportunities for whether it's clothing lines, whether it is for hardware manufacturers to help develop the, the correct gear to, to cater to the top professionals. Um, I also look at audience size. Like when I think of um, uh, skateboarding, like 
that there was clearly a hardcore kind of underground following, but like it started to get yeah. adopted by the masses and especially the younger younger audiences. And when I think of gaming, like the the sad reality else that I think of is like some people are like, oh, is gaming as big as it's gonna get right now? I'm like, uh, if you want me to be like really like morbid, I look at it as like probably a significant percentage of people over 50 or 60 don't care about gaming whatsoever. Like you're talking like low single digits right. percentage of people care about it. And so you talk about like the next 40 years, you're having 40 years of population that are coming in yeah. and are going to be significantly interested in gaming. So we haven't even hit like yeah. a peak amount <laughs> of the world or gamers yet. And so when we look at this in 30 years, we're like, oh my God, like what the heck? Why yeah. is there now like 10 times the interest in gaming besides just the actual growth of it and being introduced to people yeah. that know of it now? It's like, well, guess what? You now have 30 years of people who have grown up with gaming, understand gaming, want to be a gamer, want to watch gaming. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, having being basically generation one in that, is that is that something that where you kind of, you, you have a a passion for the gaming overall or like do you want to protect like your legacy final boss legacy halo legacy as well and and make that uh like kind of like a staple like do you want to be considered like i mean babe ruth of of esports of console esports <laughs> um i don't know and i don't think like it's my uh, my goal or wish to be able to, like just determine how i'm viewed in the future yeah, yeah, yeah. like i think all i can do is you know, like, do what I've done in the past, yeah. do what I'm doing currently, and continue to help this 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 industry grow. Um, now, like, some questions that come up in those t cases, like, oh, do you wish you were, like, born today and, like, doing it now? And, like, <laughs> you know, like, I can't change that, but, like, you know, at some point, it's like, yeah, if I could, like, make, like, millions and millions right now, <laughs> yes, like, doing yeah, the same yeah. thing, then, like, sure, of course. Yeah. Yeah, is that the answer you want to hear? Of course I'd love that. <laughs> there you go. But, um, you know, I can't change those those circumstances. Yeah. And I think I was uh, a good person at that right place and right time to help uh, – my step or that step in gaming and esports grow. So like yeah. I think I did I think I did my work on that part right. and then it's you know off to the next person to the next step. Yeah. Off to the next person. Off to the next person to like can you to continue to help uh build this and grow this. I don't know if it's like an uh uh an old head opinion of mine, but like part of me uh part of me loves like the early culture of esports just because it was just like you know it was pure like basically you go over to a friend's house and you practice there and then you show up on land you have no idea what's going on and then there's teams that were so much better than other teams <laughs> so like on saturdays on uh, on events like it was a freebie and then you got the real stuff that happens on sunday everybody's drinking on thursday like that i mean as we're drinking on thursday <laughs> <laughs> cheers to that you know <laughs> but like uh I, yeah, you saying that it would be nice to play in current days, but but there's just a, some sort of culture. Of I think there's yeah, I think early there's elements I, yeah. I appreciate and don't appreciate. Like monetarily wise, like yes, sure. clearly the, right. the people are are doing significantly better these <laughs> days compared to back in the day mm -hmm. for being the top pro or top content creator. For sure. Um, when it comes to what, how do I view some of those past days? Like they like they were some of the best days of my life. Yeah, like I absolutely. look at like early lands. I look at just like, um, you know, s sleeping like six people in a hotel room to <laughs> exactly, save money. Yeah. Like I, I literally used to drive out to, um, Michigan state university pretty much every single weekend, just go land halo. And like this place like was not well kept. And I just remember being like, <laughs> all right, I gotta move these like pizza boxes next to yep. me and like move these wrappers and like, go to sleep here like a like a vampire <laughs> not even to play just to go to sleep <laughs> yeah just to go to sleep and then yeah just like wake up and land and like uh i remember talking to uh some old teammates about this before and being like i honestly don't remember ever having like a bad day back then you know what i mean right like, yeah, yeah i was yeah, just yeah. like i was like all right sweet got done with all the stuff throughout the week like i get to go play halo, halo. all weekend so like <laughs> yes. my eyes bleed and um yeah there's there's moments of that that are super appreciated and yeah. you know, kind of helped, I think, make me who I am and, you know, gave me the appreciation for what exists today. So uh, what was it like first getting Halo? I know you had already played video. You've been playing video games, but when you first got Halo, did you know it was that was it? Um, kind of. I mean, I played the very first time. And for me, the, the mark of an incredible game is 
if I die, I I can identify something that I did wrong or that the other player did better. That okay. felt like a fair way of losing the fight. Now there's times where it's like, sure, I should have checked that corner or right. whatever. Like that that to me in some cases doesn't feel like as as fair an evaluation uh, if that's what's consistently happening. But when I thought of Halo, like I played the very first time and I played against my brother at his college house. Right. And I remember like playing a Beaver Creek. It was it was a uh, called Battle Creek back then. Like Battle Creek, it was maybe Team Slayer, Free for All. And I just remember every single fight, like he would just do something a little better. Like I would get the first shot at him, he'd hide, and I'd throw a grenade and they'd pop out and he'd shoot me and I'd die. Like, oh man, like that was such good, you right. know, well timed, well played, or like there would be times where, like, I, you know, got hit by the the plasma rifle and, like, I couldn't turn. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like, I just <laughs> felt like every single turn I kind of got outplayed. Yeah. And um, it just felt – it was just super ad- addicting to play that. Like, I just felt like I was always learning, always having fun, and so just kept playing it. And then I remember at one point running into, like – it was like one of my brother's friends at who was working at Best Buy, okay. and like they were talking about Halo or something. I was like, "Oh yeah, you know the top guys in that make like big bucks." I'm like, "Wait, what? Big bucks? Really? In Halo, this is Halo One." Yes, yes. And I was and like, <laughs> "Who could he, I, I who was could like he have been?" Talk- I was like, "I was like, tell me more." And like, I have when I looked, I was like, "There's nothing that existed." Like, this is just like this is back in the early era right. where like people just spread BS yeah. and like you just take and believe. I'm like, oh man, it must be true. Someone yeah. said it. He was talking about the developers. Like, <laughs> <laughs> who could he have been talking about? Um, <laughs> and yeah, I remember like hearing about that and like me and a friend, you know, looked up a tournament, went to a, one of the first tournaments and then finding out like, all right, there's no big bucks, but this is still but awesome. But it's still fun. <laughs> it's still so fun. Yeah, I, 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 I'll probably reference the Smash documentary a lot, but in, in that, like uh, there's, a, there's a, uh, an interview where the guy says, yeah, I, I go and I told, my, I told everyone I was going to win the tournament. I'm the best of all my friends and I go and I get thrashed, <laughs> but... From that moment on, I was just addicted. And I, I can imagine that's probably what early Halo was like, too. Yeah, and I think people come out of different situations, like you said, like those thrashing situations, yeah. kind of one of two directions. One are just like, all right, like I don't <laughs> want to put all the time I need to to get to exactly. that level. I didn't realize we had some nerds in here. Exactly. Uh, in that case, I'm going to play baseball. I'm going yeah. to do something else, <laughs> you losers. Um, mm-hmm. Or they come out the other side and like, oh my God, I didn't realize there was that many layers and depth yeah. of this game or people that were that good and it's like encouraging or inspiring and they kind of take that as like you know uh, a beating and they're like all right i'm back for more like i'm gonna i i, I yeah. saw what they can do and i think that yeah. i can do better if i put the yeah. time and work in and so i feel like it's funny just kind of hearing those stories through like it's, it, both sides and it's like a tale as old as time <laughs> for sure hey guys before we continue the podcast i just want everybody to know that we are on patreon that is how we are funding the show uh, from now on. So all the Behind the Bar episodes are moving over to Patreon. Those are all ready, uploaded, and available. We also have two other shows for for some patrons as well. One is The Coffee Bar, which is basically a weekly podcast with myself. And then we also have Relationships 101, which is an old classic that is coming back. Uh, we We have Discord access in there for Around the Bar, you know, listeners, which is also offers early access to merchandise, uh, upcoming guest sneak peeks and also some user submitted questions so if we uh if, if you guys like the upcoming guests you can submit your own questions we have tons of other perks as well um and it's all listed down in the description so any support would really mean a lot it would help us you know get some other guests in and and fly them down and drink and talk about stuff so hope to see you guys in there and enjoy the rest of the podcast yeah, it's probably like that in a lot of things. I would say like any sport, any crap. You exactly. I mean? like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You played PE one time and you see a guy dunk or hit a three or hit five three pointers straight, and you're like, "Well, I'm not going to do basketball." Well, you know what? You know, accounting sounds kind of nice. <laughs> you know, I think about it like it's like, just like, like I like, it's I like numbers, Excel sheets, spreadsheets. I, like, uh, I can do a spreadsheet. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm pretty good with numbers. Formulas. And stuff. <laughs> that is so. That, that is so funny. Um, so. Let, uh, as you go through um, the the different eras of Halo, Halo, I mean, what what a run! We talk about the run in Call of Duty a lot, but the run in Halo was like absurd because it was the first. It was Halo One, which was revolutionary, brand new. I mean, brand new controller, brand new console, and then Halo Two, brand new online system. Halo Three, another new console, right? Yep. Yeah. 
Uh, what a run. I mean, that's like a, what, 10-year run or eight-year run, something like that? Seven? Yeah, so if, I, if my memory serves me correctly, Halo 1 came out in like 2000 or 2001. I didn't play it when it first came out, so I think oh, I started playing okay. around like 2002 or something like that, or 2003. Yeah. I think I started playing in 2003. Okay. Um, and then Halo 2 came out in 2005. Halo 3 came out at the end of 2007. And then I don't remember when Reach, Reach. released. I would guess like the ten. end of 10. Yeah. Like generally it's like a holiday season game. But yeah, I mean, four of those titles over the course of that. Nine like, years, yeah. Nine years. Wow. So uh, as you're in in the thick of it with, you know, competing and you're, and you're probably, the, probably the most popular player at the time, uh, did you th ever think about the down curve? Or were you just riding the wave? Um, more so riding the wave, yeah. I would say. And I think I had, um, I had always been more optimistic or thought about like, all right, kind of where are these next steps? You know, I exactly, definitely, yeah. definitely tried to position myself to be um, in a in a spot for success. Whether I was starting like a clothing company or different things that yeah, I was yeah, like yeah. attempting. Um, but I think it's it's tough when so much relies on the developer, because I think we've had ups and downs with many different titles. And I think I think that's one part that doesn't even get spoken about as much when it's like, even Halo 1 to Halo 2, there was a lot of old Halo 1 heads that were like, this game ain't Halo. Like, really? this don't feel the same. Yeah. Um, they're like, sure, I'll try it. And, you know, it has the same title, but like, it was significantly different in the amount of like, you know, the movement, the verticality, the dual wielding, the, you know, the pace of yeah. the game. There was just, it was such a significantly different game. And so okay. you had a lot of these, like, uh, all these different changes that came from title to title that there were certain things I liked, things, things I didn't like. Yeah. And, like, I always tried to, like, focus on it as a career. But then there would be some times where, like, there may be a title change. Like, you know what? Like, it doesn't feel as much like grass rooty anymore to yeah. like, you know, it's not like my passion fully to jump on and play this as much as I would like compared to maybe some previous titles. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That, that does make sense because you don't think about it. Yeah. yeah. We do that. We have a tendency to do that in Call of Duty. We only think about the bad COD that came out <laughs> and we're like, everything before that was just everything beautiful. Was perfect. It was everything just is perfect. perfect. Yeah. And like, the, yeah. that's the thing is like, I look at Halo 1 and Halo 2 as a couple of the very top titles, but like, it's funny seeing even back then, like I said, between Halo 1 and Halo 2, yeah. even the fact that Halo 2 had online play, played right. well online, all these sort of things. There's some people that are like, I ain't playing that game. Get and out they, of here. And they just play <laughs> Halo 1 <Yeah. laughs> on Xbox Connect. <laughs> or just funny. land it all the time. Yeah. yeah, just land it all the time. Uh, but I mean, like, yeah, as you brought up Smash before, I mean, it should be no surprise. Like, if, if oh, the game yeah. is done so well, like, the the community will be drawn to that and stick with it indefinitely. Yeah. I mean, tw what are they playing? That game came out in 2001, and there's a major next month. It's, I mean, it's unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, do you think, do you think if there wasn't, if there wasn't a re, uh, different releases in Halo and you guys had the ability to play whatever game you want at all times, no matter what the developer said, do you think Halo, I guess it would be either two or three, it's probably a toss up between people. Do you think that has the longevity, would have been able to survive? I don't know if it would have, to you be honest know? with you. Um, I think that, I think the games were very good at their time compared to its competition. And yeah. I think there's there's elements of those that are still very fun that could be like um, tapped into and brought to like different parts of the modern era. But I don't know if like, I don't know if you can stand like a, a Halo 1, a Halo 2 or Halo 3 compared to like, let's say the, the modern like mechanics of like a Fortnite or an Apex oh, or like, yeah, you know, yeah, a lot yeah. of certain titles. Like there's just so many things that have been perfectly refined. Right. I do think that the gaming audience and community uh, are willing to move on to new titles if the future title like has the has all the elements that they're looking for. Like, for yeah. example, if they're like, hey, we're, re we're releasing Smash Melee remastered. And it's on like the switch. on the switch and yeah. stuff. Like I think they would be like, all right, even if there's a couple errors here, like we're willing to move on as the least, at least you've got like 98 or 99% <laughs> yeah, 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 of this yeah. right. But like, if they feel like the developer is releasing a game, that's like, Hey, this has the same title, but like, let's be real. This is like 70% the same thing. Yeah. Um, they're like, we're going to stick with we're the state of the OG. With the, yeah. We're yeah. sticking with the OG. And so, and I, I feel like we've seen that with all the titles too, like a counter strike. Like I feel like there was that split at one point between 
uh, when they released Counter Strike Source in 1.6. They like half the community stayed in one side, half okay. the other, and they kind of reconverged those communities with CS:GO. Yeah. And now they're kind of like, hey, guess what? We're not even giving you a choice. We're gonna do CS:GO too. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be happy, and like you know, they want to also do right by the community. And so I think there are ways to um, to appease most of the community that way. Yeah. Yeah. That, that is. Yeah. That that is interesting. So uh, w- whenever. Let, let's unfortunately we have to talk about the bad parts because we're bringing it back to smash or bringing it back to call of duty eventually a brawl is going to come out eventually a world war ii is going to come out where it's just like oh those games just are not going to be very memorable so reach comes out and it's kind of a little bit of backlash and so people are like well maybe halo 4 will save us and then it didn't yeah <laughs> so no, what I- was what was that like as someone who was seemingly halo through and through um it's tough i mean i think that um seeing how much power and control is in the hand of the developers is it's um it can be unnerving if things aren't done right by the community or you know you feel like your interests aren't um at heart and when something like that comes out it's like it's kind of a life changer to a degree like you know i mean I, i do think that um if I if I felt like I was playing maybe titles that I enjoyed as much or felt like I was having the success that I wanted to see or felt like there's maybe as, uh, as large as the audience that we'd like to see um, through those, like maybe career would have taken a tr- different path or different trajectory. But um, there was times where I was like, you know, when I was looking into Halo 4 coming out, um, I remember I was like, oh, I might just like, maybe I'll pursue full-time content creation. Like, you know, kind of use my, my Halo knowledge and all yep. those sort of things. And it came out, and within a week, I was like, I'm finding something new. Like, I wow. just didn't see, like, the the future in that as far as content creation or enjoyment of playing. And, yeah. And I think um, Halo still has, like, a very special style of combat and certain things that you can take out of it. But, like, I think to, to c- dedicate your life to something, it has to be something very special. And I didn't feel like it had that that special touch and it also kind of showed as far as like maybe not having the same sort of support on the larger tournament scales yeah. and and larger viewership and all those all those elements yeah i mean the there was i, I as someone who's not in halo could you explain because i played a lot of reach and i thought reach was fun but also reach was my first halo so makes makes sense but uh, what? But I also watched. I watched Halo Two and Halo Three all the time. Like I watch rebroadcasts and YouTube videos and stuff. Like when I wasn't watching COD. Um, what was it about? What was it? Because we know we know the, the bloom and sprint for Halo. But what was it about Halo Four that kind of? Because it seemingly was not. I mean. I, I, I don't really know much about it, but Nick Nick blasts it <laughs> all the time. Uh, so what what was it about Halo 4 that, that wasn't uh, loved too much by the competitive community? Um, man, how do I... The only thing I know of, he said that there were, the snipe stayed in scope. So I think there's probably going to be a lot... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means, but... <laughs> man, the, the snipe, the, most times when I... No. <laughs> uh... It's now I gotta like dig back. Yeah, deep I know into, like, it's a my lot of brain. I'm like, we don't right, even have to talk just, about it if you don't want. No, to. no, it's it's fine. I I'm just trying to remember because like I think there are a lot of elements that kind of add up to it not being successful, nor being on like maybe like this same like strong or solid foundation. And okay. so I think as you look into different decisions that that are or were made, I think you can look at those same sort of decisions or or level of like thinking kind of cascading through every part of the game and so it might not just be hey the snipe didn't descope which um you know at the highest level of play uh when you are shooting somebody who is zoomed in with their sniper in halo their zoom they lose their zoom right which makes it very difficult or much more difficult to snipe um and that's really important the highest level of play because all these people have such crack aim. Yeah. And they're going to hit every bullet. They're going to hit every <laughs> bullet. And yeah, in a case like that, it's, and, and it was also like a, at a higher level of play too, like these sort of like zoom battles you'd have, like even outside of sniper, 
as you're zooming in and fighting someone with a battle rifle, like there's times where like you would kind of time these fights and like someone would like shoot me and like I might take a, a half a second be- between shooting my next burst to make sure I can for sure hit this one and then I zoom in right after that and then I now have the zoom advantage on them assuming that they don't hit their next burst. Yeah. And so there's just like small little differences yeah, yeah, yeah. like that that uh, that all kind of add up. Like it was that, it was um, you, anytime you picked up the flag, First off, you didn't have a choice to pick up the flag. If you walked by it, you automatically picked it up. And yes. then secondly, you could not drop it. And so there's times like in a high level play, like Oh, that was in could, Halo 4? That was in Halo 4. You could no longer toss the flag to somebody. If I had rockets and I was oh the flag God. carrier, the flag what? carrier died and the flag ran to me. I now no longer have the rockets in my hand. I have the flag and I'm just a sitting target and I cannot fight back. Okay, that's insane. Or I, guess, I, I did guess not I know have that. A pistol. I think I had a pistol. Okay, uh, okay, but, okay. But like like I said, there's just a lot of those things along with map design and just yeah, all these yeah, different yeah. elements. And I think that um yeah, it, it's just a lot of that, those parts added up. And I, I yeah. do think, too, this isn't also exclusive to Halo. When I look at, like, a lot of current AAA titles, when it comes to them worrying about, like, the graphics or fidelity, like, for me, I'm I'm an older, more simplistic man. Yeah. We're going with old-fashioned. I'm an old exactly. guy. <laughs> old guy. Um, I think, for me, the most important part is, like, where is that core base fun piece in there? And then from there, you add in those layers. But... Having done some experiences within game design, a lot of this done in parallel, and there's a lot of like conflicting parties and heads there kind of crashing in as this game design process goes through. And uh, sometimes you end up with maybe a, a more watered down product or something that isn't as um, perfectly competitively viable. Not saying that a perfect competitive game is the end result, right. but yeah. as I'm in esports, that's what's most important to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you have done a little, you, you have seen the other side of it, the mm-hmm. developer side. Um, what, how, what is the, what is the opinions on competitive esports from the developer side? Um, I think it depends on different developers. Okay. I think that, um, there are very positive and probably negative, uh, connotations around, around like gaming and Seemingly. esports. Yeah. Because I mean, you have such a, uh, they'll call it like the vocal minority in many cases. And like sometimes if you look at a, a very large game, like let's say a Call of Duty or a Halo, like sure, maybe the people that do attend an eSport event are in this point zero 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 one percent Right. But it also is this very influential group that, you know, it's in many cases it inspires people to watch the game, to play the game, to do all these things that are surrounding it outside of attending this event. Yeah. Um, and so, like I said, I, I worked at a very small studio for a bit, um, and it, it it really depends on on which studio you're looking at. I yeah. think many of the top studios like uh, view esports as a uh, important thing to focus on or have as a vehicle. Okay. But I don't know how many activate it right or do um, do it perfectly right by the community. In some cases, like oh, we'll just throw a tournament and we're gonna be fine, right? It's like, right. well, not just has to be that. It has to be how well is the game balanced? How you know are you creating stuff that works well for the content creators? Are you doing stuff that works well for the pros? Are you um, do you have somebody that can listen to and give the right feedback? Somebody that can hear what the pros are complaining about and like turn that into something actionable, or yeah. also understand what the the concern is? Because also also you know knock pros for a second, like. They don't know how to give great feedback. I'm gonna be honest. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's like this gun is dumb. Like, all right, so you want me to make the gun less, less dumb. dumb? Okay, all right, so, so make that gun less dumb. Exactly. Um, anything else? Yeah, like, yeah. this thing is OP, and it's like you need to change the damage on this weapon. It's like, uh, I think, I think in those cases, like, I, I, if I hear feedback like that, I'm, I'm able to like take a level or two deeper and just right. say like, all right, what they're saying is that when they're saying this game, this gun does too much damage, they're saying, all right, how can we reduce the damage per second on this weapon? And like, you right. can change that by not just reducing like the bullet damage, you can change its rate of fire, you can change how many how much ammo it has. Like there's a lot of yeah. different ways to to change what someone's feedback is. Um, yeah. And yeah, that was such a long winded rant. I forgot the question was, was, was the question of Halo 4? Yeah, I, I yeah. wasn't a fan of Halo 4. All right, moving on. I wasn't on. a fan of Halo 4. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, <laughs> Uh, we we talked a little about this about this uh, this Smash documentary is just uh, this. I watched it all as well. Oh, you have? Of course. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah. yeah. so it's just this beautiful yes. Yes. Uh, so four, well four hour documentary that basically revived uh, the scene in a sense, but also it also is a is a is a cool part of uh, that community because it it uh, it saved a, a, a core part of its history. It's 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 now documented. There are yeah. there are five or six players that are in that you know documentary that 
otherwise may not have ever been talked about or may have, you know, uh, fizzled away and or, or, or very rarely talked about. We have those people in call it there. There are legends in call of duty that are like vaguely talked about because only a certain amount of people like remember them. How has there ever been talks of making a halo documentary because, or have there, has there been a halo documentary? Because I feel like it's like the most rich console esport that we have, especially historically. Cause you guys like started everything especially uh, in Call of Duty and Gears of War, like uh, anything console related, like we can always attribute it back to the early days of Halo and the early days of MLG. I feel like stuff like that's been discussed. I don't know if there's ever been large, meaningful steps towards making it happen. Yeah. Um, and at some points we do have some little snapshots in like some of the later years. I mean, the fact that we had like a TV show between like 2006 and 2007 yeah. or whatever the years were. Right. Um, so yeah, we might be missing some of that stuff um, between like you know 2000 to 2005. Like, yeah. you know, there's maybe like small clips circulating from there, um, but uh, yeah, I think something like that could and would be awesome. If but I think it ultimately takes like you know the right the right director or storyteller. Like I think the yeah, person yeah. who did the Smash documentary. Um, I got a chance to talk with him, and I feel bad I forgot the the name of the Sam Ox. Sam Ox. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, and I was just remember like. Watching one of the episodes, it was um, it was Mewtwo King versus uh, what was it the Shizwiz? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I just remember like seeing the editing to that that fight between it was like Marth and Falco, and like just seeing like the beats to it. It's like this person just like had all these right elements to properly tell the story. Not only did yeah. they have a passion for the melee community, they had this incredible um, storytelling ability. They had this editing ability or whatever they yeah. put together. Like it was just this awesome mixture. And so I, I also don't even know if like you could throw in the top ESPN like reporter or, you know, yeah, director 100%. to like put, yeah, try to yeah. put this together and like, they're not going to have some of those elements. And so I think, yeah. uh, I think there has to be somebody with that special combination to yeah. be able to properly, tell that story and do it justice and find, you know, like, you know, how are we telling the story of like strange purple? Who is this? Yeah, how, you know, yeah, yeah, who's yeah. killer N? Who is shiz? Who is yeah, yeah, dark yeah. man? Like all the these early, sort of things. Early, yeah. Early like some days. of those early days could be, could be fun to, to revisit, but then also we're also getting older. Like I think that smash doc was done. What, oh, 10 years ago. So longer. Yeah. 10 and like, years. That's like fresh ish. Like we're talking that's like true, maybe yeah, five yeah. years after it came out. Like that's true. I told you, man, I'm 40 now. <laughs> I'm 40. Like you're going to try to tell me like, yeah. you remember this tournament? I'm just like, yeah, yeah, of course I do. <laughs> now you tell me what you know about the tournament. I'll I'll confirm or deny if that's right. Dude, that being said, Halo players are freaks. <laughs> like I was in a I was in a the first Halo uh, event that I ever really truly attended was like PAX, um, PAX something I can't remember. But uh, Nick Nick and uh, Nated and Ace or someone else they were they were playing in like a four team tournament and at the at the end of it. At the end of it all, like we threw a little like party get together in our hotel room, and dude, Clutch and APG and Nick and Lethal and PJ, they talked. <laughs> dude, for five hours, they talked about they talked about a certain gunfight on a certain map in 2009, and if that hit hit, and I'm just sitting there like I, at the time, at the time I was like super interested in Halo because I really wanted to learn more. Uh, because I was super influenced by it, but didn't know enough. So I'm just sitting there soaking up all this knowledge. But I'm like, dude, how do you guys remember map three of a seven game series <laughs> from five years ago? And are, are you guys that way as well? Like um, Halo 2, Halo 1 players? To, to that exact level, probably not. I think yeah. there's certain areas that have maybe been like more burned in our memory where it's like, you know, whether it's like a certain clip that's gotten replayed a bunch of times yeah, or a certain yeah. moment that's been talked about. Mm. And... And I have moments of that, but like... Like taking I, candy from a baby. <laughs> <laughs> but the baby would have put up a better fight. At least you got the full quote. Let's, <laughs> let's go. At least you got the quote quote. I'll give you a... Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, there's... I think there's maybe certain small moments of that that I, I remember more vividly. But, like, for the most part, like, I think... How many tens of thousands of games of Halo I've Dude, played yeah. and like to try to like something really has to be special to like really stand out to even like remember that moment. Right. Um, and so, yeah, I think there, there's 
there's some of those moments I don't remember uh, as well as I wish I would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would take something crazy like someone not playing the ball. <laughs> <laughs> and you got to play the ball you play there. The ball there. <laughs> <laughs> there are moments in Halo that are just so, it, it is so fun. Uh, just to, because I never, I didn't watch them in real time, but I hear the stories and just hearing the stories, it feels like campfire esque, you know, <laughs> like just hearing all these people that were involved. Um, you talked about a little bit about the develop. You want you want some more old fashioned? Whenever, whenever James comes back, we'll get Let's take to get a drink around here. Yeah, what is it? <laughs> we'll, we'll get him. I can like, shoot him a little text. James. All right, he heard that for sure. Um, uh, you talked a little about the developer side, Halo Infinite, which I am a huge game, or I'm a huge fan of Halo Infinite. I think it's a, I think it's a, it's, I probably put the most hours in Halo Infinite than any other Halo I've ever played, uh, just because I was such a COD kid growing up, th- digging for the cherry. Yes, I am. You're the cherry. <laughs> like I said, like I said, it's. The cherry is the, is the dessert. <laughs> um, my, my buddy, uh, my buddy Jack is convinced that, you got to release any shooter in the, la- in, in the last five years. You got to release any shooter with the Battle Royale game type because that's what really takes the, uh, the game to the next level. Is, do you have any insight? Is there, is there a BR that's being worked on? Is there a talks of a BR when it comes to Halo? Um, first off. Let's, let's throw a few disclaimers here. I yeah. do not work for three. You do not work for three for three. I am a member of the broadcast. Absolutely. And I, don't do anything. Um, I have no idea. To okay. Be honest. Uh, when it comes to Jack's statement, um, it's hard. Like I, I see both sides of it. Okay. Uh, like having been part of the developer side, there are a lot of time and resources and certain things you need to do to make something done and do it well. Mm-hmm. And when you also look at a lot of titles that release these days, it's like, all right, do they have? the campaign, the single player story, That's split true. screen, like all these different things in modern game game development are, you know, the, just the, the size and scope of the project increases dramatically. Now, I also am a firm believer that like, technically you should be like, you should be able to throw money at these problems. You should be like, all right, well, guess what? We're throwing 100 million of this, 50 yeah. million of this. Like, <laughs> like I, I'm a firm believer that if you create the, the best and right thing, like you have so much power in the gaming industry. You see something like a, a Fortnite right now and like the amount of money they're investing into the the Fortnite creative mode. Yes, the, the different the, chapters. All yeah. those different things. And like, you know, so the different seasons, stuff. all the different interactive elements. Like clearly it shows like if you can be the absolute leader in that, you are in such a strong, strong space. Ooh. So from that element, I look at it as if you're one of the bigger hitters in the industry, um, I would strive for that. I would strive for nothing less than number one. Yeah. Um, now, with that being said, like I said, at some point you have to decide between all, you know, you might have a set budget or a set amount of resources to create this game, and it's like, all right, well, what things can we create and what things can we create well to the level that we need to and on what timeline? Um, now, in a... In a unrealistic world where like resources, all those things don't matter, like 100%, Halo should have a battle royale. Like yeah. I do think the game is well equipped for that. I think if they they find the right twist and spin on that, like yes. all, even, all, Halo vehicles, there's so many weapons throughout so the air, many. so many different grenades, exactly, like, so many beautiful things about Halo that would be so awesome to bring to the battle royale environment. Halo yeah. can take its twist on it, exactly, and it would be so much fun. And I think it's great not just from a player perspective, but like a content creator's perspective, like. Oh, for there's sure. just things that are done so well in a battle royale that are like, you know, just they're they're fun moments for gamers. Like every single life, mat, you know, every single moment matters. And if you die, like in some cases, like, well, fire up another game. Yeah. Like it's kind of like very, you know, you sometimes don't drag out these losses. You don't drag out those those moments within um, maybe a unfun streaming experience. Like, well, guys, we're down 240 to 17 in this King of the <laughs> yes. Hell. We just got 10 more seconds left in this one, and we'll we'll fire up another one, chat. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, Exactly. And so I think that, uh, yeah, I, in a unrealistic world, or if I could snap my fingers and have a Halo, Halo Battle Royale, I would have that instantly yeah. for sure. And there's a, lot of, there's a lot of people in the Battle Royale streaming community that came up from, I mean, obviously Ninja, but Ninja aside, there's a bunch of other people that came up through Halo that would for sure come back and, and it just seems like, Halo was meant for, a, it seems like BR, not Halo was meant for a BR, but Battle Royale was meant for Halo. Like it would just be like hopping on a ghost or hopping on yeah, a Warthog. Yeah, I don't see another greater like, um, 
like you said, a game sandbox or ecosystem that. Oh, in a martini glass too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll take it. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much. Um, I agree with that. I do think that, like, as like a preset sandbox, there's not many other titles I can think of that, or any other titles I can think of that is better suited for a battle royale. Yeah. Like you already have certain things in there, like the overshield mechanic and all these certain things. Right. It's like you know, oh, you yeah. level up those, or like you having like an apex and yes. whatever. I think there's a lot of um, awesome elements in there. So, yeah. you know, I would. I'd be the first in line to play if it, if it happened. <laughs> yeah. I would love to see it happen if where, it happened. Where does Halo Infinite uh, rank for you and all that in, in the Halos? Let's see. Because I was, I, I'm, a, I'm a simple man. My, my buddies make, make fun of me for it. They call me an old head. I don't really like all the button pressing. I kind of like the scope up and or gun up shoot. You know, let's do our, our little strats. So I loved watching and playing Halo. And I, I didn't play Halo Reach until there was no Bloom, no Sprint. So I kind of got that, like, slower, m more methodical play. But when I tried to play Halo 5, I was like, what the hell am I doing? Like, <laughs> I was playing in the, the beginning, so I was, like, levitating and ground pounding and all this stuff. And I was like, this is a little bit too much for me. But Halo 4 or uh, Halo uh what infinite. A, infinite, geez, the, <laughs> the old fashions. Uh, Halo Infinite is like a, I think it's a great pace. Like, I, I really, really enjoy it. Yeah, I do think it has great pace. Um, if you ask me where I ranked it out of all the titles, I think it's tough for me because I do have like this, you know, 20 plus year history yeah. of like Halos and like like a considerably favorable view towards the early ones, which right. in some cases, like I said, they'll stand alone likely wouldn't stand the test of time like i don't Ooh. i don't know if they would um have the same sort of like fervor or fan base as like a smash melee right like i think that there can absolutely be you know high level tournaments for it and a hardcore fan base for it but like i don't know if it has that same sort of uh viewership or appreciation as something like a smash melee yeah. with that being said uh i think i would put it somewhere around like maybe like my fourth favorite. No, I man, it's like, good. It's solid. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Like, that that's is solid. Good. It's, like, it's a I, correction I, from its predecessors. Yeah, I, would say. I, I do think I like Halo Infinite more than Halo 5. I think that might be uh, contradictory to a lot of other top current pros. I think a lot of them really appreciate it. Lucid doesn't like, matter, man. <laughs> Lucid doesn't matter. He's a crackhead. He'll like, <laughs> but I, I do think there's like this, this interesting balance you have to find out within games. And like I think it's, it's really difficult to. Uh, in some cases, even articulate as I'm struggling for it right now. It's like yeah. you have this element of like, let's say this game is perfectly competitive, have zero elements of randomness. Like, right. I don't think that game Dang. is fun to watch or sometimes even play. Agreed. Like, I do think that if I'm, if you're talking about that was the, the perfect, issue with like Splitgate, like Splitgate, I, I, apparently is super competitive and super fun to play. But watching it, I was like, what the <laughs> hell am I watching? <laughs> Yeah, and I think like like I said, I think there's a lot of these different like scales or spectrums you have to work across. Thank you, sir. Yes, I'll dig for the cherry. Let's <laughs> um, that you have to work across between you know making like the 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 most ideal game and like I said, when um, this might come contrary to like other like purist beliefs, but it's like I do think an ex the way I define it is like an acceptable level of randomness has to exist in a game. And that can be different from game to game. Like battle royales, we kind of accept a different level of randomness. Like you're dropping down with no weapons. You yes. don't know what what loot exactly. you're getting in those spots. You don't know where the circles are going to end. And um, and I think that they you you need to get that to an acceptable spot where it's also competitive. Yeah. Which which it is. Right. To, you know, there's there's definitely like I mean, kind of kind of like there also is the arguments that like you know you look at like some like Imperial Hal and TSM like consistently winning oh, quite yeah. a bit in Apex. Um, but the whole point being is like like I said, there's this arbitrary figure I throw on like a on a line. I'm like acceptable level of randomness. Where's this at for this game? Right. And how do you introduce that? Yeah. And um, I think different elements of that are really important to to throw through in a game. And when I think of something like a Halo Five, um, I look at like you know it's it's incredibly skillful at the highest level. Like there's just That's so many true. things. Like and one thing that I I didn't enjoy about Halo Five is that. I didn't feel like it was very welcoming to a newer player, newer audience. Like you start to add so much skill to even using something like the assault rifle. And yeah. if uh, if I was looking at design on that game, 
personally, I would have done something where I'm like, you know what, assault rifle, like, I would make this, like, the easiest gun to shoot in the world. And guess what, like, you could you could go in someone in the very first game, like, get a bunch of kills, get a double kill at some point, because yeah. they're they're just, they're able spraying. to hold down the trigger, spray right. brain, able to instantly lock on someone. But the highest level, like, a, a pistol versus assault rifle, pistol's going to win 99.9% .9 of the time, because yeah. guess what, they're just, they know how to hit their shots, and that's this, this different step up and this different level. Yeah. But I think you need to look at, like, how is this game played at, you know, entry level, and how is this game uh, played at the highest level, like what people call like the skill floor and the skill ceiling. Right. And a lot of times those kind of move in tandem. A lot of times like, yes. you know, low skill floor, yeah. you know, high skill floor, high skill ceiling. Yeah. You think of something like a Dota, or you think of like a low skill floor, lower floor uh, skill yeah. ceiling, and I won't trash any games. Um, <laughs> but um, <laughs> Call of Duty, you can say it. I, didn't, I, didn't, I never said that. I never even said that. <laughs> you can say it. Um, but... Um, I think that the the goal is that lowest skill floor ceiling that you can possibly have within yeah. that, that game's mechanics and the highest ceiling possible. Yeah. And uh, I do feel like Halo 5, to me, was closer to like something like this, had a very high skill ceiling. The people yes. that played it were incredibly skillful, Im impressive to watch, yes. but um, you didn't have the entry mechanic. Yeah, it was, it was a hard one to jump into. It's a hard one to jump into. Yep. Um, but that being said, do you think I th I think Halo Infinite is, is first of all I was a big fan of the Halo Infinite campaign. I don't know if it, I don't know if other people were, but I loved that. I loved the little like running around and the whole thing. And so I th I'm sure that got a lot of casuals like into the game. Like you buy the Halo, you're like oh I haven't played Halo campaign in a while. Let's hop in and it was fun and you you played it and then um and then you're like well let's check out multiplayer. Multiplayer is free, right? I think well, yeah multiplayer is free so. Check it out. And uh, what do you think the entry level was like for Infinite? Um, that is a great pathway and, and element that I think Halo has compared to mainly titles. Like, it has such a strong campaign. Now, um, Matt might need to like, cut this part out, but, like, I didn't play the Halo Infinite campaign yet. So um, <laughs> you we'll should just, play we'll, it. Let's bleep this and um, move on to the next question. What's up? <laughs> do you actually want us to bleep it? <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> um, uh, something that I... I I always on the flycast. Nick and I tend to have Halo guests because he comes from Halo. So we've had Lethal on. We've we just had uh, uh, Dead Zone, Dead Zone on. Sorry, I just want to call him Penguin. Uh, we've had Dead Zone on. We had, we've had uh, Halo players on Brad and the whole Halo team. Um, and a, a a topic that comes up all the time is the the top twenty five because it was such an exciting summer. Or it was 25, right? Or was it a whole 100? I can't remember. It was top 25. Top yes. 25. So what I want to know is how did they do? Were you a part of the of the judging of that? or I was part of the judging. Okay. And um, I think what got released is something that nobody's really very happy about. Of course. Um, and so It's never going to be. I want to do it in COD. I would love to never see. never going to be, but I think that... Um, you know, there's different ways to to counteract that, like whether it's, you know, having um, all of us just release them all publicly or like, you know, kind of like mm -hmm. having having a, a, a stronger, better approach, I think um, would have been better for that. So I think it's uh yeah, I think it's it's unideal how that that list came about. Oh, really? So you weren't a fan of it coming out? Um, Cause I for, think I think it was exciting as hell. I think it was Did exciting. You, do you remember that? I think I think most <laughs> you talk to most anyone. I don't think you'll find anyone that really agrees with the placements on it. Like, of course, there's gonna oh, be different yeah. biases for different generations, and I think I think you start to get into really um, difficult conversations around how do you rank mm. eras and generations? Because as you look at like, well, let's say I look at today current top Halo, I. I don't think I could make a fair argument to say that the top current Halo players wouldn't just like beat the the past generations of players at their current level versus their yeah. their past current level. But also you have to look at the the level of competition or domination at the time. You also have to look at, you know, what games are the highest at the time. Like I think there's there's other things that sometimes aren't taken into consideration. It's like all right, like maybe current generation aren't playing against Shotzi and Hook right now. Yes. Like, like I think back in you know some early days, like Halo, um, it was the the top competitive console title, 
And I would say in many cases, some, some of the other talents were playing like Gears of War and Call of Duty. Whereas I think, uh, unfortunately in some cases now, I do think it's part of the reverse. I think some of the top FPS talents are garnered more towards like Call of Duty okay. and some other titles versus the PC being titles, hailed. yeah. Yeah, and so I think there's there's a lot of elements in there that's like, it makes it a very difficult and subjective one. First off, it's a very exciting yes. topic. Like everyone loves to like talk <laughs> debate. And, and debate through through stuff like that. So but, did, you get, did it get heated with the judges? Um, let's behind see. the I scenes, behind, behind the scenes. The scenes um, I don't know what I can share, but I I think the only thing I can share is that we were told to not confer and just make our own list in silos. So oh. I think that's I think that's also um, so a you, difficult part. So did you just send in your list and then they made they they compiled everyone's it. yeah they averaged oh, everyone's list. Okay. So I think it wasn't like so wasn't who like, had Shotzi at number one? That's what I want to know because <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Shotzi was. I make that joke too. Or I'm just like I'm just like all right. Here's the thing, Shotzi. <laughs> <laughs> Undoubtedly gonna be a legendary gamer yes. and likely be in the the gaming or esports hall of fame at some point. Mm -hmm. um, uh, however, Shotzi could have gone through an entire tournament uh, not having a single death and <laughs> uh, and like perfected and not had any mistake. And I've been like, he's still on top ten, bro. You, right. you gotta yeah, gotta do this across multiple times. Yeah, exactly. Halo's kind of this list. You gotta this you gotta, game. <laughs> we're gonna do multiple games, and so like. Um, I think like, yeah, I, I don't know and can't throw, can't and don't want to throw down anyone under the bus. Um, yeah. but yeah, it's, uh, that's, that is very funny though. <laughs> I, it, it, I, I can imagine how, uh, how he did and how, uh, stressful that probably was on your side of the fence but for us we enjoyed it <laughs> for us with no real opinion no, i think i did the same i think i did a similar thing i think i tweeted i was like like when i was like i was like i'm, I'm eighth or whatever i got i was like i was like who made this list I was like, <laughs> oh so you, you weren't happy with eight let's bump that up i we had we had tj on the flycast and we said were you happy with the list because like you were he was two right or he was three i can't Lethal was two he was two. I was like, you were happy with the list? He was like, no, I wasn't happy with the list. I was like, you were two. He's like, I should have been one. <laughs> like, oh, my God. It's like, wait, when you're too into it, it's... Uh, it's. Uh, but that being said, have you seen this trend going around uh, called um, We're Done with the 90s? No. What is okay, this? Okay, there's this trend on TikTok right now. I, I feel like I've talked about this way too much. Um, but there's this guy who has gone through all of the, the 1990s, like late 90s basketball games. They've all been uploaded on YouTube <laughs> of like the Bulls playing the, uh, the jazz. And, and it's just like the best players of all time. It's, you it's know, just like Carl Malone taking a free open shot. Exactly. And <laughs> and John Stockton and, and uh, Scott like, Pippen. Like does a big pass one way and like goes the other one, like the crowd goes fucking wild. Exactly. Like one does one crossover. People are like, <laughs> how did he do that? And uh, and then also some bloopers as well, like the their Scotty Pippen passing the ball is bouncing off of Michael Jordan's head, and <laughs> he's just he, he's really obviously it's kind of uh, trolly, but they're they're really uh, honing in on basically how the change of play is just insane, like from the '90s to the current day, and you know now old heads are fighting for the let's say fighting for their lives yeah. defending Jordan. No, I think that's that's why it's such a difficult conversation to have. Because I think as you go through any um, greatest of all time conversation or any sport, like right. in general, as long as it's staying a very popular activity or sport, mm -hmm. like it's just going to get better and better. Yeah. And it's tough to take it in context, context because if you say, all right, who who would win one-on-one -on -one right now? This person in their prime, this person in their prime. It's like, well, the person who's more in the recent era, yeah. that person in their prime. Like that's <laughs> the answer. Almost all the time, yeah. Almost all the time. Like <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, yeah. simply the answer. Right. Um, but then, yeah, like I said, it's, it's tough as you look at other considerations. Like, what was it like? How were they compared to their competition at the time? Like, right. did they somehow go leaps and bounds above? Like, what did they do for the sport or the game? Um, and also, like, access. Like, what do they have access to? Like, like right now, if you want to look up the best way to play strongholds on whatever map there's probably 70 exactly someone that can build videos. up off of years of of knowledge and you know versus things being built and yeah. and created and so yeah like like i said i'll i'll, I'll concede that 100 of the time it's like hey current gen of any sport any game like 
like I said, as long as it's popular, like yeah. the current gen of Smash Melee player is going to beat whoever, you know, Ken from 15 years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The current gen of Halo is going to be better than Ogre 2 15 years ago or right, whatever yeah, it is. Yeah. But like, uh, it's like I said, it, I think it all depends on how you approach that. Like if someone's like, if their mindset is who is better one on one in their prime, I'm just like, all right, save, save the conversation. I don't want to hear anymore. Like it's, it's, it's this is a person. It's the newest one. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Is that the answer you want to yeah, hear? Yeah, exactly. Simple. Yeah. But when you're talking about when I when I think of the greatest of all time debate or whatever, I think it's era based. I think it's how far above everyone else were they in their era and how does that relate to how far above, you know, people were in so in 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 their era now. So, you know, you think of the the best player who's the, who's the, who do you, who would you think is uh, throw a name out there, it's not it doesn't have to be your cosign, but who would be considered the best player right now in Halo? Probably a renegade or a lucid. Oh uh, yeah, or, renegade, lucid, um, frosty. Yeah, like frosty. Yeah, yeah. and it, uh, and it's just like, how would you compare the goat status now to an ogre two back in the day? Like, was was he, what what is the level of dominance? Is it still about the same, or was there a way bigger dominance? Um. I would say there's not really like that same level of dominance right now. Like I, we're gonna kind of see how things shake out here. We've saw true, like yeah. you know we saw how Opta kind of took over year one. We saw how Phase has taken over year two. And Unfortunately, as we go into <laughs> this third year here, <laughs> we'll see how how things shake out. But like mm. like you said, like there's maybe there's there's not maybe the same level of like dominance um, currently in this game between one of those members. And also when I look at Halo, I look at it from multiple titles. Mm -hmm. um, now, if you're looking for more of that, that comparison, like you look at like, you know, the, the Royal two and snake bite, like duo who was dominated for so many years. And there was, there was straight up levels uh, or years of their dominance, especially yes. like within Halo five. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we currently see that within, within infinite. Like, I yeah. don't think we see that level of dominance. I think you see, different individuals who are absolute standouts um, and teams that are that are just above the rest. But um, I don't know if we see like the clear exact number ones as we've seen like right. MVP sometimes sh change hands. Which is better for the spectator. That's the thing is, I would say <laughs> from a current spectator, that's always the best. Exactly. When it comes to nostalgia factor, people always being like, oh, I loved when that was happening. It's like, no, like it kind of sucked watching that <laughs> tournament. Like it kind of was like not as fun for the spectator yeah. to know a drawn out result just like, prior to before. Why would I watch? It's, it's not fun <laughs> during that time. It's fun to look back on for, yeah. for the spectator side. Unless you're on Final Boss. Unless, you know, in that case, <laughs> it's a hell of a lot of fun, you know? I, I, <laughs> how many was it nine straight or something why did you even go anymore <laughs> you just sign up and they just mail direct deposit you the <laughs> the first place title what was uh i mean i i hate to ask you questions you've been asked a hundred times but what was that what was that run like and how often do you have to think back on it or think back on it you know it, are they memories now or are they memories of memories <laughs> Um, let's see. They're, they're one of those two, somewhere between memories and memories of memories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the first thing I do every morning, I wake up and I pull up myself <laughs> on YouTube and I just, exactly. I watch and I show my wife, I'm like, hey, check, this, check, this, check out this double kill. Isn't that sick? Whoa. No, no, look, you're not looking. Look <laughs> you're at this. You're not looking. Um, but yeah, I would say it's like memories of memories and, or, you know, somewhere in there. Yeah. And it's, um, you know, such a special thing, like you said, like it's yeah. really cool to like, at some point things just kind of become like you know, more of like accolades or check marks, like, oh, right. shit, did this or had this. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's not as meaningful one, you know, one to one for some of those where it's like, right. You know, if you quiz me like, all right, name all the tournaments you won. Like, I don't know if I could literally <laughs> name every tournament I won right now, like yeah, as yeah, far yeah. as like a, a like a, a national or major tournament. But, um, you know, it's still really cool to be like, oh, like when, you know, whatever it was, like, 16 months like taking first place like every tournament or like i forget there's there's some something out there out there like when when me and the final boss crew like got together is like from the end of halo one all the way till early halo three we were in every final that's like, insane that is insane what a what a run wow yeah what is the what is the practice regiment like that and what is this 2006 2007 what is the practice i mean when when because you guys probably invented scrimming 
Probably to a degree, like you know, I think um, back then, like we said, it's not the it's not the same comparable today. You don't right. have everyone on like you know, there's no spreadsheets and perfect, coaches. Like full, yeah, no spreadsheets and coaches <laughs> setting up scrims, and, right? Yeah, and those sort of things. But you know, we were we were very diligent. We were practicing, you know, five plus days a week. Just really? Doing, wow. Yeah, just scrimming, and we'd always make sure we'd had like a team we'd practice against or we'd all get on and, you know, pretty much any team would drop whatever they're doing, to, like scrim against us yes, to, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. to practice. And we just get scrims. We do some review. I always viewed, um, when learning about any, anything new, like I, I kind of approached it like in a, in a, in an academic sense where okay. I, I viewed like if you're, let's say you're cramming for like some sort of test or some sort of subject or something you don't want to do, like, you can't just do that all at once. You can't like you can't just learn calculus all in one sitting. And so yeah. the way I always treated like practices is I would always want to say like, all right, guys, before we get on, before we do the fun stuff and play, like playing and screaming, let's be real, it's so much fun. It's so much fun. Like yeah. especially when you're super competitive and at the top, like yes. it's just fun. It's fun to beat people. It's fun to beat people, <laughs> but to like make sure you're getting those incremental advantages and in growing. I've always I've always been a proponent of like, all right, before before we get in the fun stuff, let's let's do some of the unfun stuff. Yes. Let's do like let's quick talk through this game mode. Let's quick talk through these specific scenarios. And I, I've always tried to direct towards being very specific because when you're at the highest level of play, vagities don't matter. It's not like, hey, should we run the flag left or should we run the flag right? It's like, no, like I'm sure in very specific sense. Yeah. instances like you should run the flag car side or pink side based on this exact sequence of events or this yeah. spawn scenario um and so i'd always be like i always approach things from kind of as you can tell like maybe i'm a more analytical person like i look at things like a spectrum or what whatnot <laughs> and i would look at things kind of like best case scenario and worst case scenario and i would always try to challenge that that mindset and i would say all right best case scenario Let's say we can have any single thing we want on this map, any single particular weapon, any position, and they just all, they're all four dead right now. Where do we want to be? And right. I would always like try to challenge with that and, and use it as a conversation starter because it would be, it would take everyone's input and they would say, I think we should be up here, here, here. And then all of a sudden you'd have this, this difference of like, well, why should we have someone in front of the base when we could have someone on top of the base? And they're like, well, because of this, and we can block these longs. And it would and just you be get conversations. Would, you'd yeah. get conversations. And what I usually found through those conversations is that generally both people are right, and it's just depending on the situation. Yeah. Okay. Like in a very in a very specific situation, if they're spawning a certain side of the map, this spot's better. However, if they're spawning this side of the map, this other spot is better. And so yeah. I always try to look at things, like I said, from very specific situations, best case scenario, worst case scenario, and anything in between, and use those as conversation starters to talk about like what we should be striving for during a match. When all go, when all's going well, here's how we capitalize and get more value out of the situation. And when all is going bad, here's how we mitigate our losses, and here's how we uh, make sure we get out of this with as few deaths or as few ball time as possible. Right. Yeah. I mean. That that's that's a lot to go over in 2007. <laughs> that's a lot. I mean, you kind of expect it now because esports. I mean, that's how it is. You're watching demos in CS or Val. You're watching VOD in in Call of also, Duty. Also, Halo Two didn't even have uh, VOD. Yeah, you'd have to just re record your own POV, so yeah. you didn't have like a, a theater mode. When did you start record like recording your clips? Because um, you were. You, I think I did it in early Halo Two when I started like just create like you know send some clips. And yeah, I went to yeah, the montage yeah. editor. I, I, I made my first montage myself. Yep. Hundred percent. Oh, me. you edited it? Yeah. Really? That's right. When you see that like that <laughs> .5 slow or that two X speed up. Yes, that's you. Saw this guy right here. <laughs> That's not the Halo 2 montage, though. Um, not the one. It the was a one. different Halo 2 montage. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> not that one. I was like, that one's Damn. a real editor. It was like, you learned After Effects in 2000. <laughs> you were also... No, that one goes to, uh, I got to give proper credit, to Peridius. He okay. was the, the montage editor. And then um, VG, he was the guy that did these 3D effects okay, um, okay, for okay. the introing sequence. Yeah, yeah. And you were you the one with the bullet? The Yes. <laughs> yes. That was him. And that was VG. That was VG. That's so sick. Dude, that's so ahead of its time. I mean, you got to think the Call of Duty Predators montage doesn't come out until 2012 or 2000, 2010. So not until four years later. That's so ahead of its time. Uh, so what were you using to record? Like a uh, hop hog or? I forget what it's called. I want to say it's like 
Is Pinnacle sound right? Is there like a so Pinnacle I, thing? I, I, I invented Pinnacle and <laughs> and created this video recording software back in 2005. Matt, and Matt can you the look hardware. that up? He can't find it. Matt can't find Matt it. Can't find it. Like must. I said, like I said, I, <laughs> I created this, but um, no, I believe it was something called a, uh, I think it was called Pinnacle. And if I recall correctly, it was like on the stand, it was almost like a, a little like tr uh, square. And on one side, it had like the inputs for the red, white, yellow, right, uh, right. like, you know, audio and video inputs. And on the other side, it had like a red, white, yellow outputs to go to my TV. So it like fed through that, right, right. fed to my TV, <laughs> and then like, you know, it was recording my, on my uh, computer. So yeah, so like an Elgato, but. The, yeah, basically like an Elgato, but the, I believe um, it was called like something like Pinnacle or whatever wow. back then. Yeah, dude. I, see, I, I just assumed it, that's before HD PVRs. That's so. I didn't even know because because the the Smash guys they would record their stuff on like literal like discs like VH almost like VHS is into wait, wait, don't CDs. Don't send Let me change the cassette real quick. Yeah, exactly. I think that's literally what they did. Because <laughs> uh, who? I mean, those are so early days, and people. I, I mean, there was probably such a longing to like watch Halo or watch early video games. Yeah, there's definitely like an eagerness. I think early on for all that sort of um, content, and I think there was. Uh, for me, there was differing views on that as well. And I think you still see that today at the highest competitive level is like me being like, you know, I want to, mm -hmm. you know, provide stuff for the fan base. And then the other part being like, I want to also be cognizant of like what competitive advantages I, I may have. Yeah. Um, you you said earlier that you kind of back in the day. Looks like that. Is that yeah. it? Is I, that I it? Think, I think so. It, it, it like it, it stood basically horizontally on a stand off of like one of its corners somehow like it had like some okay hole in one of the corners that like it propped up okay okay but it was something like that but it's basically that company i think so yes <laughs> that's so wild you're making montages you can't remember what you were recording <laughs> on i mean the xbox uh, xbox original recording wow what a what a time um you you did say earlier that you kind of uh thought that you you wanted at least to go down the path of being the Tony Hawk of, or I'm, I'm guessing some, what you mean by that is somebody that transcends the sport itself, like yes. uh, Michael Phelps or Tiger Woods, Tony Hawk, something like that. Do you think you, was there a time in your life where you're like, I did that? Like I've done that? I think in maybe a smaller fashion for okay, sure. Okay, okay. I think within like a certain community or certain like ecosystem, yeah. I think I, I think I, I am or was that. Okay. Um, but I don't think like, yeah, I don't think on a overall mainstream scale I'm that person. Like if you had yeah, to yeah. like name anyone, it's like probably like a ninja. Like who you know, if you say ninja to any name out For sure. there, people like know who ninja's is. Yes, yeah. Who yeah, he yeah. is. He's like in movies, like people might not know a single gamer, but they might know ninja. Okay. And so like I would consider like probably ninja as like that person. Like there's For sure. a lot of other people that have I grown up as top pros or top content creators, but I don't think anyone's hitting the mainstream appeal that ninja has. Yeah, oh yeah. When it comes to gaming for sure yes yeah but but i mean don't sell yourself short when it comes to halo i didn't know i mean i i knew who i got your pistola was just because how crazy of a gamer tag that is i couldn't tell you who he was <laughs> but you know walshy was always talked about it was always on the the front page of the game battles you know forums and the game battles page and so you you always knew who you were and and like what what comes with that outside of the game was there, was there, at what point in your life were there, were there deals on the table or were people like, oh shit, I gotta, I gotta talk to Walshy cause he's the man. Like, and, <laughs> and, and did you ever feel that at the time? Um, I don't know. Actually, I don't know if I've like had to navigate that as much. I think we're definitely in a different era now with, with like the level of content creation and oh, Twitch yeah, streamers sure. and like different levels of like potential like parasocial relationships or like different business deals and, yeah. and such. So I think I was still very early on. I think I'm not think I'm super appreciative of like, like having a lot of like credibility, especially within like a lot of these top, you know, there's a lot of pros or content creators that will like, you know, give me like kind words or like, you know, yeah, something yeah. like, like formal, like, another event before like he'd, he was like yo you're, you're the awesome you know you're the best and yeah like, like hell yeah like nothing real you know like getting like a compliment from like a top from, from, pro or yeah. top content creator like it feels the best you know what i mean yes yeah, yeah like yeah. so i feel really appreciative of that that like i think a lot of people who are in um 
uh, really influential positions in the industry um, yeah. give me some credit. And, yeah, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm appreciative of that. Well, that, I mean, that's it's good to hear how humble you are about it because a lot of people in your position would be like, it, none of this would happen without me. I, <laughs> I'm just sitting outside the venue with like a cardboard sign, like, do you know who I am? There, I, this, I, this event right here, I was, I was inventing pinnacles and, exactly. and, and recording Halo montages back in the day. Look up, look up the exactly. Halo videos. A hundred percent. Look like, at the bullet. The bullet like I looked has... up, I, I see nothing on Google. They're like, well, still give me five bucks. Exactly. It's in there. It's in there somewhere. <laughs> you, you, you joke, but there's people like that in Call of Duty. There are people like that. Um, but uh, we have we, we got to play beer pong actually because you got to play beer pong. You got to go pretty soon. Um, but uh, last question I have when it, when it comes to when it when it comes to gaming and your career and your we didn't even get to talk about commentary as much. We'll have to do this again because I love I love your 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 commentary is so great. It's like Tony Romo commentating uh, NFL. Uh, you so much insight and uh, passion behind it. So when it comes to your career through competing, through working behind the scenes, and now uh, commentary, is it gaming that's the passion, or are you all in on Halo? Is Halo the love? What's the what's the love for Walshy? Gaming is the passion. Okay. Without a doubt. However, within that gaming passion, uh, if you look at that Venn diagram, a huge significant portion of that is overlapped by Halo. Okay. Like, you know, Halo is, um, you know, I've always been such a, a big Halo fan. I've always, you know, it's, it's kind of propelled my career to where it's at. Um, I do think there's still so much special within Halo that it can reach a, a whole new level you know it's at a very big level now but i do think it still has the potential to reach that high level yeah um so yeah overall gaming is the number one answer okay, okay, halo okay. 2 is a subset on that <laughs> halo 2 specifically or not not halo 2 sorry, <laughs> you, halo. i don't know that was a freudian right. slip yeah, that is, that is, yeah. <laughs> now you think now you say it yeah <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on and we get to shoot the shit a little bit. Uh, we, I'm super excited to do this again. And next time we'll talk for hours. Sounds good. <laughs> thank you. Did you, is there anything you wanted me to ask you before, before we play some beer? Pong? Um, I don't know. Let's see. Had a couple funny stories to share, but I think we can save that for the next we one. We can save it for the next one. We can one? save that for the next one. Okay. I'm yes, super, absolutely. super down to save it for the next one. Matt, do you have anything? You want to ask? No, I'm, I'm saving it all for around the bar or for behind the for bar. For behind the bar. Behind okay. the bar. Right. Behind the bar is the beer pong show. So uh, thank you guys. Is that happening right now? Right or is now. That a different time? Oh, right now. Right, right, right now. Yeah, right. we're about to t- we're about to lock in right now. You got you. We, <laughs> we're fine. Are you we're sure? Fine time. Yeah, you sure? Okay, okay. okay. Um, thank you guys so much for watching uh, around the bar with Walshy. Uh, definitely subscribe to the Patreon. Uh, watch us play some beer pong and answer some funny and maybe uncomfortable questions. Uh, and it should be a lot of fun. Thank you again for coming on. This was Cheers. a blast. Thanks, Cheers. Yeah, man.